we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday. Um, this remainder of the lecture will be just in video format. So we're going to deal with some of the scientific issues that we cover in environmental assessment. And one of the first is designing sampling. Uh, how do we know where and how do we know how to do it? So that's something we'll learn in the field and partly in the practice exercises. But we need uh, some information beforehand, usually. And often that information is pretty minimal. So we need some ideas uh, that will help us. And we'll, we'll learn about some of that. Some of that relates to where we might expect to find contamination or where, that we're, where we'd expect to find environmental gradients across the site. We may have some information, for example, uh, different soil mapping units and in that case we can do what we call stratified sampling where we take different categories of samples in different map units at our site. That doesn't always exist. How do we know if our data are reliable? Well, we're going to spend quite a bit of time, in fact in the prank next week we'll have uh, a look on Monday and Tuesday at how we get our data into shape and uh, what we can do to ensure the quality of a pre-existing data set and when we're creating a data set from sampling and analysis and generating the numbers ourselves we'll go through a number of techniques for example uh, lower limits of detection and which data to report and which data not to report uh, things like how many decimal places we can use and uh, what we do to the data to make it as reliable as possible. So some of the statistics that are coming are how do we know if there's a difference between different types of material or different sites or between our site and the background and we use formal statistical mean comparison tests. We need to understand which ones are the best and why uh, and how we can use them and of course we will go into all of that in some detail in the Monday, Tuesday practical classes. The difference between means of course depends really on the size of the within group variability relative to the size of the difference between means. Another key piece of information is how do we know whether variables are related and there are a bunch of formal statistical procedures for assessing that ranging from graphical analysis as shown in this scatter plot matrix to the left hand side of your screen uh, or correlation analysis and there are variations on that which we'll go into and where the most suitable or best for any particular application and if we get really uh, into this we can use multivariate techniques like principal component analysis, although that won't be part of the formal teaching process in this class, but if anybody wants to do it, we're more than happy to help. Another thing we can do is look at uh, regression relationships. Let's try and predict one variable from another. It's related to correlation, of course, but there are some peculiarities of it. So here's an example of a data set that I learned how not to do the wrong thing on, um, where it looked like across the whole data there was a fairly consistent relationship in this case between soil pH and it was a, uh, a mine exploration related project where we looked at the fraction of gold extracted by a particular solution and looks like pH was a pretty important control. However, um, that wasn't the only story because the samples came from a whole lot of different prospects or environments and when you uh, split the data by a different environment. Sure, there was a positive relationship between gold and pH in some, but not in others. So it's really important to explore at least the effect of sample grouping or sample categorization on any of the st statistical procedures that we apply to our data. And we will be spending a little bit of time on how best present scientific data. And we have a, a whole lot of options at our disposal. The question is which one is best? Okay, so that's content-wise we're 
we're kind of headed with data analysis uh, and sampling, it will unpack itself as it goes along. And in particular, when we do the field trip on the 16th of March, that's when a lot of it will start to make sense. We'll figure out what we're doing, what the environment looks like, what we can find out. And, and certainly in that field trip and the preparation for it and the subsequent labs where we generate data, we're going to be getting a clearer and clearer picture of what we're doing in this unit and what our final project and, and class research project is looking like. Okay, just to close, we're all heading in some sort of direction, many of us towards a career sooner rather than later, given this is the third year of your degree. Um, of course, some of you will be going on to postgraduate study, but this is uh, relevant to you guys as well. So uh, a very interesting report that came out uh, a couple of years ago now um, by Alpha Beta Foundation uh, looked at what careers are likely to look like in the future and they came up with it some categories. Uh, it's always convenient to categorise information. It becomes a little dangerous to categorise people. However, uh, you may find yourself informed by this in that it helps you think about where you're headed. Uh, I would imagine that if you intend to pursue a career where you use the skills that we teach in this unit, you will fit in the, to the categories of either informers or technologists. So informers, we provide information or we uh, teach people or we understand and manipulate digital technology. That is, we're, we're data scientists. At least that's my take on it. I, like, I guess we do environmental science for a reason too. And part of the big picture reason behind that is we want to improve the well-being of others by improving the well-being of the environment that we live in. So the, this is linked, uh, and there is there are also other reports that might be of use to you. Okay. So finally, uh, where can we find more further reading on this? Uh, in terms of the data analysis that we do, the, I, I would point you towards a couple of publications. Uh, this book by Clemens Riemann and co-workers is really good. It's focused on environmental geochemistry, but it has a lot of relevance for what we do generally in this unit and it uses R to explain uh, the statistics and the concepts so uh, it's available as an ebook in the UWA library uh, because we find it so valuable so you can access it for free through there no need to buy it it's actually quite expensive uh, another good resource for exploratory data analysis is by the United States Environmental Protection Agency um, it's called something lengthy, the Causal Analysis Diagnostic Decision Information System, or CADIS. Uh, but really it's um, got some excellent information on how to approach a data set from the beginning and what to do with it to uh, generate interesting information from just raw data. Uh, now I've got an annotated version of that available. It should be on LMS right now with uh, the information from the EPA, but I've, what I've added to that is the type of procedures in R that you might use to do the analyses that they suggest. So that should be a useful resource to you as well, and I'll, we'll make sure we point that out to you. Okay, it's been good talking to you.